You met Shane yesterday because you've had two and a half years to do it. Um, I met Shane. Um, <clears throat> Tonight it's about engaging the community to have a look at what the, uh, the potential mayors look like, okay, what their vision is, what their passion is, where they stand in the community. Um, there's a massive disconnect between the community, okay, and the council obviously, that, that, that's been very apparent. So all we're trying to do is bring everyone together and those that care, those that are passionate about the community are here to listen. Through experience I know what works and just as importantly I know what causes problems and causes some projects to fail to meet their original objectives. I am absolutely ready to step up into the top job. The role of the Mayor of Tauranga will be my full-time job. I'm currently preparing for this and will resign all my central government roles and relinquish all my private business ownership and directorships. This is actually in train now. I plan to take the role as your Mayor very seriously in my work as I have in my work in the private sector, on government boards and in the military where I've been charged with safeguarding and caretaking investor value creation and advancing brand New Zealand internationally, leading organisational growth and culture and on occasion having charge for the lives of my team. My name is Zangi Marie Te Amapu Ka Kingi. It's lovely to see you all here tonight. Yeah. I'm representing a younger generation of women. I stand for women, I stand for Māori women, and it's definitely time for a change for Tauranga. We can feel it in the air. I want to be excited, I want to enjoy and enjoy being with people and enjoy the developments of this country. I'm also uh, the great-great-granddaughter of the first Māori king, Tāwhio Potato Te Whero Whero, and the original families were involved in the gate power confiscations. If you don't vote for me because the council has tarnished my name, then use your vote to ensure change. The truth is out. Eleven must go. It's about getting off our backside, being proactive, and at least telling people we care. That's the lesson we must get. And of course, stop that obscene expenditure to try and mitigate that expense. They call it improvement. Whenever you see this council use that word improvement, run like hell, because it's <laughs> going to be a disaster. <laughs> Honestly, how can you do something like Greerton and then say you didn't expect that to happen? We've got to realise that there are some people living here without houses and housing. And so we just can't turn off the tap completely and so we've got to look to other areas and one obvious thing that we could do in this city is intensification and I don't mean everybody living in dense towers or, or, or apartment blocks, I mean giving people the choice at different stages in life or circumstances you want to live differently and I advocate that choice to try and solve some of our problems. Thank you. When is Council going to take responsibility and fix 18 Orion Drive and 51 Hastings Road as per the MB technical review. Kelvin? Thank you, a nice easy one to start with. <laughs> okay. Look, council, the responsibility of council is to enforce the building regulations that we are often lumped with. Okay? Now, in these situations, I, I haven't met um, the Hastings Road uh, homeowner but I've met Shane yesterday at Orion Drive. We function under a, a legal and a um, regulatory system that means that I can't just bowl in as Deputy Mayor and sol solve all Shane's problems. And under advice, a legal advice, I've kept a low profile on that. And, and that's what we do as elected members often. However, I put that aside yesterday. I went to see Shane. He went through the whole process with me um, I saw a lot of things that concerned me, yes, and so I have resolved uh, with Shane to uh, bring this up with the Chief Executive and uh, work through the actual issues one by one, and if we can get resolution, um, that will be something I'm working very closely towards um, in association with the, the, the builder. It's interesting, Calvin, I'm just going to digress for two seconds, that you met Shane yesterday because you've had two and a half years to do it. Um, I met Shane... Um, <laughs> So two and a half years and 27 hours before the debate. So I just thought I'd make that point because, frankly, I think it's unacceptable and the, the legal constraints under which you're operating are absolute nonsense, sir. Absolute nonsense. One of the things which leads me... 
which leads me to the, the, the question really, the city from my point of view has lost its heart, there is no compassion. I mean to have homeless people, to have Shane and his lady, to have the Bella Vista families, to have, I mean Shane's from Orion Place, to have Hastings Road not consulted on. Shane's house has been pretty much unbuilt now for four years. It is extraordinary. Um, I have met with Colleen uh, the other day, Colleen Spiro, and it was wonderful to spend a bit of time with the, um, with the street retreat folk, and I met with Liz Kite from Under the Stars, and what I've proposed to Liz, and I think I may have mentioned this to you Colleen, is to get everybody together, to get all the wonderful people that are doing these works for our homeless people, and get them together to quantify the problem. I think we'll find the problem is a lot bigger than what we understand it to be. But can I say this, passing a bylaw to sweep the homeless out of the city without there being a plan is not a plan. Guards and all these people who actually, these people don't run the council, it's the background staff that hide in the offices instructing them to get a lawyer or go and threaten people to go to court and that behaviour, that adult behaviour needs to grow up and get over yourself. Otherwise, we need to overthrow the justice. They're going to keep threatening people with the courts. The justice system must be really corrupt because the justice system has failed to address this $460 billion criminal debt. Thank you. Well, um, I sent many letters, many emails, and um, asked Tauranga City Council elected members to meet with me many, many, many times, but none of them would. None of them would sit down with me and go over what was happening at Bella Vista, why they did this to me, um, and, and all the homeowners, right? But um, no, none of them, none of them would answer any emails. None of them would respond back to me. It was all because their lawyers must have told them not to. I don't know. That's right. You know, um, I think up till today, it's like over a million dollars just spent on lawyers. That's right. Just, just for Bella Vista. You know, uh, just to try and um, charge me criminally. You know? When you're an elected member and you have someone saying to you, if you say something out of turn, you're going to cost these ratepayers of yours millions of dollars, then yes, you take advice and you think, okay, I'll just lay low. And that's, and that's what we were told. And so that was the reason we did that is because we didn't want to jeopardise your money. <laughs> I stand by that. I stand by that. I'm worried about our future, you know, definitely for Tauranga. I'm worried about what's going to happen for, for my future, my children. Um, I want to live here for the next 50 years, not just the next 10. So now is important, put that infrastructure in now. I think Tenby seemed to get the best applause, uh, but each at their own time had their moment of glory. Tenby Power for his passion and for being a sharp shooter, but Rangi Maria actually, because she actually answers it differently and because I liked, I liked what she had to say and I like the statistics and I like the Māori aspect. I suppose overall probably Tenby did, I think, um, although Kelvin, I, I, I like Kelvin, I like Kelvin. I don't like anyone that is existing in the council. There's only one that was any good. Who's that? We'll leave that for uh, the uh, voting, shall we?